You're all very welcome. Um, the 26th of May is our 10th live broadcast. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and keeping yourselves busy and plenty of gardening work to be done this time of the year. Um, so last week um, we had our Scotland images. Um, <clears throat> I think um, everybody did a great job in presenting uh, their own images. Um, and for those people, um, you know, it was it, it was quite daunting for some, obviously, because it was their first time ever presenting anything to the club. So well done. Great selection of images, guys. Um, and hopefully we can um, get off again somewhere next year uh, when things are more in our favour and um, get some more great images together. Um, tonight, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you um, a fellow... Um, SACC photographer. Um, he's Paki O'Donoghue. Paki is um, an LIPF. He's a member of Blackwater Photographic Club. Um, Paki is the present holder of the SACC Nature Photographer of the Year. Now, Paki has been lucky enough, um, well, maybe not luck, but he's, he's good enough to have won this um, title twice. He won it before in um, 2017 as well. So congratulations, Becky, on winning that title twice. Um, very well done. I think it's a statement of where you are with your um, nature photo photography. Now, Becky is also going to show us his LIPF panel uh, this evening. So I'm really looking forward to far forward to this. Um, Becky has been involved in photography since the 1970s, and he's been a club member. Team. He was awarded his LIPF in 2016. And as I say, he's the present Nature Photographer of the Year for the SACC. Um, so without further ado, um, over to Paki. First of all, I'd like to thank the Cork Camera Club for inviting me on to do this uh, video link. A big thanks to Charlie O'Donovan and also to Tim Murphy for all the technical stuff. What I'm going to show you tonight is images that I like taking. I do all kinds of photography, except composites at the moment. I might do a few this year, with the help of God. So let's get started. And I'm showing two folders of images tonight. The first one is a mixture. And the second one is wildlife and nature. This, um, this image, um, I started taking um, interiors of old houses um, probably a good 10 years ago now. Uh, what inspired me was um, Margaret O'Neill and um, the hunt to chase down these um, fantastic old houses. It's probably a skill in itself, and then to get into the old houses and start taking these images. So, thanks to Margaret O'Neill for inspiring me for uh, this selection of images. Um, this is an image I took, um, I suppose, about 25 miles away from my own house here in Mallow. But um, when I walk, when I walk into these houses, like you know, it just amazes you, like you know, what you can find in these. Um, I found two. Two lovely suitcases on the table, like you know, and uh, I said, Look, definitely there's a story in this, like you know, somebody probably packing the suitcases and left, left the suitcases and went away. Now, I took this image with a Nikon D7000, and um, I'll just explain uh, the settings. The ISO for that, this one was a uh, 100. Aperture was f9. I shot it on an 18 to 105 lens at 18 millimeters for two seconds. So that's the first image. Again, staying with the team of um, old houses. This again is an image I've done very well in a few competitions with. Um, again, it's uh, it's. An image. I try to explain to people that uh, when you see the image on the screen, 
is completely different uh, on a print. The print is actually fantastic. Um, hopefully down the line, when all this uh, COVID-19 is finished, I'll get up to show you the image on the print. Um, it will be a better image on the print from, for me. You know. On digital, it's okay, but the print is fantastic. Now, so again, staying with the team of the old houses. This is another um, house I found. Actually, the bike was actually at the opposite side of the room, so I just got the bike and put her over there just by this little window and um, this holy picture, nearly 99.9% .9 um, every old house or in a room has holy pictures. This is another, as you can see, the holy pictures, if you could count them, one, there's one upside down, two, three, um, it is amazing. Um, uh, the excitement that I get when I go into these houses, I can uh, to see see what's there, and 99.9% .9 of them I don't touch. I just leave leave the stuff there. Um, don't try and move it around because you're taking from the actual image. And actually, if you look at the door where the bicycle was in the room. That's exactly that's the same house, but I just closed the door. This is another image. Um, one of our members in the club, um, I asked them if they came around any um, any old houses around their own area, like, you know. And in fairness, this lady approached me and she said, look, there's this image uh, inside in this house we have to take. And um, I said, yeah. <laughs> Under no circumstances would anybody find this house. Like, it's about maybe a mile inside in the wood. I would have never found it, and ever. In fairness to not, she got permission. And that's one thing when I do go into these old houses, is I do look for permission. Um, and if I get it, so be it. And if I don't get it, so be it as well. As long as I. Um, the person that gave me the permission to go into the house is happy with that. I'm happy as well. So if a knock came to the door, they'll, they'll ask, well, well, who are you? Like, you know, well, I said, I can get permission to come in and photograph this, these houses. Now, this is an image. I had the opportunity in getting into this house two days before it was demolished. And um, it's just, like somebody walked out of this house and just left it the way it was. You can see there on the right hand side of what I'm looking at the screen is on my right hand side is um, a holy statue there and they must have bought it because the plastic is still on it and um, just left there. Um, it is amazing like you know, it is, uh, I don't know who lived in this house but probably it was back in the 70s or 60s again. We're back to holy pictures, um, statues, crosses, candles. It's amazing what you can find in these houses. But again, I don't touch anything like you know because just in case the people want to come in and they want to um, take take the stuff out of, out of their houses before they're demolished, so be it. Like you know, this house is only twenty yards away from me. And I spotted this um, child's pram in the house. And um, I found out who actually owned the house because when we moved in, I asked the girl, any chance I can have a loan of your... Um, she is now 55. I said, is there any chance I can have a loan of your pram? I just want to take a photograph inside in uh, your, the house that you were born in. And she said, no bother. So I just... She had the pram in another room, so I just brought her into this room where the, the holy picture was there. And um, I, I think it's a lovely, lovely image, lovely. And I still have the pram because she never came back for it. So hopefully someday I'll meet her and that I can uh, give her back the pram. 99.9% .9 of the houses that I go into are vacated, right? But actually, as I call a live house, there was actually a person living in this house. And just through, through a contact of uh, mine, 
asked me would I come and do uh, a photograph. The person that was in this house had a fire in the kitchen and asked me would I take a photograph of the chimney breast because they wanted the insurance. So I said I would. So I was amazed when I uh, went, in, went into the house. You can see the, there's a radiator uh, here, here on my left hand side when I look at the screen again. All the pictures, like, um, okay, it's a little bit dark. The room was dark, but down at the, the end of the bed, there was um, a leather um, kneeler. And then the, the person who said their prayers there every night. So actually, it was a live house, as I'd call it. Like, you know, but every room was different, like, you know. So I was uh, thrilled to get into this one. And unfortunately, the person has passed away since and uh, people that got the house cleared it all out. So I have some nice images of this one. Okay. It is amazing what you will find uh, in houses. A matchbox, Maguire and Patterson's, um, a large print mass book and holy water. In the house that I was left into in two days was demolished. I picked up this um, matchbox and I was inside and I put a brooch. Um, it must have been high heat or something. So I forgot it was there, but I opened it and I just put up the thing, uh, up in the, the dresser that was there. And I left it the way that I found it in so that the, the people could see it. And they, they probably might keep it for keepsake because it was probably a brooch from their grandmother or their great grandmother. Um, another one of these beautiful houses. This um, image, um, again, there's a big story to this, but I can't, I, I'd be here for about two or three hours to tell you about this one. But, uh, um, I take photographs the way I see them in the old houses. Um, this one, I call this one a timepiece. Because you have the clock, and again, you have the holy picture. And um, some people asked me, why didn't you clean up around the front uh, where the chair is and uh, tidy it up? But I think that's taking away from the image. Um, I like to leave it as is, as photographed. Might be everybody's cup of tea, keep the place clean but or tidy it up, but I like it the way it is. I'm getting away from um, the old houses teams, I um I do a lot of motorsport. Um, I suppose I've been photographing rallies and motorbike uh, races um, since I was in the nineteen seventies, seventy five, seventy six, seventy seven. Started off with a small little pocket camera, um, trying to be get the best I could out of these little things, like in a little cameras with flashes up on top of them, like in a send them off into the um, the chemist, get them printed and come back and there's nothing in them. Um, I suppose everybody is the same, like, you know, starting off that time, but uh, um, I hope I've progressed from there, like, you know, so there's a little track um, up in the Valley Horrors and um, uh, it, it, it happens there every May, unfortunately, this year. It's cancelled now, like, you know, because it's the English and European Championships. And they come over to Ireland and um, they race around this track. It's absolutely fantastic. It's worth a trip just to go to see it alone, like, you know. And um, 99 points, 9 percent of these cars are actually motorbike engines in them. So it's well worth a, a trip to, to get to this scene. Um, next, I shot this with um, a 7200, 2.8 uh, Nikon lens on a D800. I actually had a 1.4 converter. So it got me from uh, 200 to 340. Um, I think my um, ISO was probably about 800 to 1000. And uh, I reckon I was about um, 5.6 to 6.3. I'd say my shutter speed was definitely one is to two thousand of a second. 
to freeze the action. Um, it is pin sharp, um, fantastic lens, like you know, for, a, for for this for this job, like you know. And um, you can nearly see all the detail. You can nearly see their face. You can actually see their faces uh, inside in the um, cockpit of the car. Um, so can zoom in. You can see them, like you know. But I, 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 I do go to this little place. Um, just to uh, another friend of mine uh, said that this area is a beautiful uh, jump. So we can go on to the next one, and. Um, they can see it again. Um, this one is probably a, a better shot again, like, you know. Um, again, 70, 200, 2.8. And these, these guys are traveling at maybe 120, 130 miles an hour, like, you know. Um, and again, just pin sharp, like, you know. Um, you can see the boys. There's one guy here with a red, um, just on the right hand side of my screen. Now, there's a guy there with a red uh, jumper. And he has a, a speed gun. And I'd say he, he's uh, checking the speed of that coming up in the air, like you know. So um, again, just pin sharp. Um, you have to find these locations. Um, there wasn't many uh, these two here, guys here on the right hand side of the image, and on my left hand side here, I was actually hanging out over a wall. So um, it's hard enough to find these uh, jumps, but when you can get images like this, it's well worth uh, uh, trying it out, like you know. This is another image um, of a track that's not too far away from me. It's in the Balahoras. It's a fantastic day to be out there, like, you know. Um, it's back again. Uh, it's supposed to be on May this year, uh, 2020, but unfortunately, um, due to the COVID-19, uh, all these uh, things are all cancelled. But um, it was on last year. It's... Um, it's the UK uh, version. Um, they come over from the UK and they race in this uh, this track. Absolutely fantastic. Um, all these cars are hand built. Um, each one of those uh, car does actually they're not car engines. They're motorbike engines. So it's absolutely um, fast and furious. Uh, it's well worth uh, a visit now. I have uh, got, uh, hopefully, um, when it comes back in 2021, um, no, where I was shooting this was way, way back, like, but um, I've got access now into the, um, the circuit itself. So hopefully I'll get some better images in 2021, but there's nothing wrong with these ones. Like, you know, but where I was standing, uh, these images are good too, like, and uh, they are pin sharp, like, and I probably took that with... Um, 7200, 2.8, uh, with the 1.4 converter. Uh, I do a, a lot of um, fairs, horse fairs. Um, I like photographing elderly people. This particular gentleman was back in Puck about maybe four or five years ago. And um, I spotted him coming in the gate. And um, he was with another chappy. And um, I followed him around the uh, puck for um, about an hour. And um, I said, look, I have to come up and I have to ask him, could I take his photograph? Because I don't like shoving the um, lens into these people's faces without asking them, first of all. So I actually asked this gentleman, could I take his photograph? And his exact words, he said, nobody ever asked me. He says, can... I have my photograph taken. Because I was the man, he said, next to me, they ask. But I said, I'm asking you today, I said, and I'll make you a promise, I said, the following year I'll come back, I said, and I'll give you a print of that image. So I took his photograph, and the following year, I spotted his mate coming in, the puck fair again, into the field. And I asked him, is your friend with you? And he said, he's on the way. And I was delighted. I met him with his nephew and I presented him with a lovely image of himself. And um, the man nearly started crying. So I was delighted that I, I, I gave him that opportunity to see himself in an image like, you know, so I was thrilled with it myself. And 
we all got photographs taken with him uh, again, like you know. So staying with the team of the Hearts Fairs again. Um, I think this one was taken in, in Caribbean in Bodifant. Um, I have uh, entered in a few uh, competitions. No, I don't think he got he got on well, but um, I like the the features in this man. Um, a rough a rough face, like you know. Indeed, that's lovely detail in them, like you know. Um, again, horse fairs. Again, if you ask these people, they're more than willing to let you take their photographs. And um, I get to know them now because I travel around to all the horse fairs. And in 2020, some of the horse fairs are cancelled now, like you know. So hopefully, I'll meet all these people again in 2021. No. Oh. This is an image um, I took in Caramie, in Bodifant. Now, it's a pencil effect that I gave it. And um, this was actually one of, one, of, uh, one of many images that I sold to a few public houses and a few restaurants in Bodifant because it depicts um, the horse fair day. And um, it would... It, Sold fairly well for me, like, and I'm delighted with that one. Like, and I like that kind of effect now. Again, it mightn't be everybody's uh, cup of tea, like, you know, but uh, to me, uh, it looks well and it prints well. Um, I got it printed on uh, pearl white, um, beautiful paper, and it printed beautiful. Again, getting back to the horse fairs, this was in uh, Spansel Hill last year. I see this guy, um, he was talking, <laughs> he was talking to the horse, I think they're asking him, will he come along? So I said to him, I said, is there any chance you'll give the horse a kiss? And in fairness, now he obliged. And um, I called this one the horse kisser instead of the horse whisperer. Um, I changed it to black and white because uh, I think it works better than black and white. I, um, I spotted this guy coming in the gate and I said, I let him settle down for a, a few minutes. And I, I will approach him and I'll ask him, can I take his photograph? And he obliged, no bother whatsoever. As I said again, if you'll be nice enough to these people and, and, and ask them, can you, uh, can you take their photograph? 99.9% .9 of them will say yes. Very well limited will say no, like, you know. And uh, I get to meet him quite often. Then, like, you know, I'd probably get a nice print of this man out and make. Spencer Hill is supposed to be on in a couple of months' time, but unfortunately it's cancelled. So I'd have an image for this guy because I would like to give it to him because the detail in his face and the mad hair and everything like you know. So hopefully I'll get to meet him. And just for um, people might ask, what kind of a lens do you use? I used on this guy now, I used a 7200, 2.8, and my ISO was 250. My f-stop was 3.2 and my shutter speed was 1 to 1 800 of a second. And I call this Mick the Second, this guy. This is another image from um, Caramy and Bodifant. I know um, a few photographers there on Cock Camera Club have taken this man, I'd say, um, at Caramy. Um, nice chappy. Um, again, the detail in his face. Um, that's what I was cap trying to capture, like you know. Um, I haven't seen him no um, in the last two years at Caramy. You know, um, hopefully he'll be there. Well, he can't be there this year because it's cancelled. Uh, hopefully, I get to see him in 2021. This is another horse fair. This is in Abbey Field, County Limerick. It's a small fair, but um, it's a nice day. It's, it lasts for about six or seven hours, like, you know. Um, it's on the street. Um, I just like, uh, there was great detail on his jacket. And I think he was, uh, he was carrying a bale of straw at one stage, uh, or hay to the horses, like, you know. So um, again, I asked him, could I take his photograph? And he said, no bother whatsoever. So again, um, I probably took him in a 70 to 200, 2.8. Um, I do all my uh, kind of portraits 
Um, I should have read uh, a Nikon D800 and probably again it was at 155, but I actually cropped that in a square crop because it looked better in a square crop. This chappy, <laughs> um, I spotted him uh, and we kind of leaving in the afternoon from Spencer Hill and uh, I just spotted uh, the little puppy head in his hand and I, I asked him could I take his photograph and he said you have five seconds he said to take my photograph and you're not taking any more well I said thank you very much I'm going to take your photograph now and I shot off about 10 frames and um, he said you're having no more he said and says, I thanks very much. This man was in Spencer Hill again. But, uh, I call this one uh, Best Friends. Again, at a horse fair. I think this was in Puck. And I said, you know, I'll do, try and do something different. I spotted these guys with rings and sticks. And I said, so I was taking um, portraits. I'll take uh, pictures of hands to see what they come out like. And I changed this to black and white. Oh, okay, the ring will sh probably show um, a red stone, like you know, but I think it works well in black and white. Uh, again, it's something unusual, like you know, I probably didn't have the 70 to 200 2.8 on with me that day, and um, I zoomed in just to, to get the hands. Uh, I like it, probably some people mightn't like, but we'll do a small bit of seascape. This is a shot I took in uh, in Dingle many, many moons ago. And I call this the Lone Stone. I actually got some acceptance and salons with this one. Um, I think I got a silver medal in the SACC. Um, got more, a few more things. Um, it's a, as I said, many, many moons ago, but I just like the, uh, the flow of the water. I think it was down to maybe half a second for that, like, you know, just to get the movement. The famous sunbeam in Ross Bay in Kilarglen, back that country. Now, I took this image on my knees. The water was coming in over the, um, the wreck of the boat. And I took that ISO 100. Aperture was f14. Again, this is another image of the sunbeam taken at a different um, angle. Um, took it way back. Um, I actually liked um, the black and white version of this. I, I uh, copied it over to them, color to black and white because I, I, I love the, uh, the detail in the sky and, and the slow shutter speed. I think it, I took this at about a half a second, like now. It has done well for me in a, in a few competitions many years ago, like you know. But this sunbeam is not here and uh, is not uh, there anymore, um, unfortunately. So um, it is nice to, for the people that have the images of the sunbeam, and uh, it's unfortunately for the people that don't have them. So um, I like that one in black and white. This is a shot in um, Menard Castle. In Dingle, um, I like the um, the movement in the clouds. Um, in this sh this shot, uh, very early in the morning, um, it's a bit of a trick to get down to it. But if people know it, um, there's big boulders on the as, as, as we're looking at the screen now. There's big boulders on the right hand side. Um, you have to climb over them to get down and. Um, I probably did have a grad in the sky, and um, I probably had a tree stop. Uh, on the water, like you know, because um, I just like the movement, and um, it worked out nice there. I, I like this image, like you know, I haven't entered in any competition or anything, like you know, but I just, I, I just like the, the image myself, like you know. And again, that's what matters. If you like the image yourself, fair enough. Um, now it mightn't be everybody's cup of tea, like you know, but to me, um, I like it, and that's what that's what that's to me that that's good enough. There's a story to this image. I was actually in Dublin uh, visiting um, a brother-in-law of mine 
Um, he, he was getting a five bypass. And um, when he was having his operation, they were told he'd be he'd been there for six or seven hours. So he said, I'd walk away down in Dublin. Uh, and um, I said, I'd, I'd chance a few panning shots. And um, there's a little uh, a slope down in uh, down where the, the hospital. And I said, my God, I said, this is a great opportunity. I, I do a bit of panning. And um, it worked out for me well. Um, I won't say it was my first time trying it, but um, uh, I've tried and I failed and I've tried and I failed. But um, I got an image um, printed once upon a time from my L panel and um, I kind of took the settings from that. And um, it is in color and black and white, but I, I actually love the black and white version of it, like, you know. So I would uh, suggest to everybody go out and try and do a bit of panning, like, you know. Um, it, it's another challenge, another bit of photography, like, you know. So, um, again, I changed it to black and white. And uh, to me, it works better in black and white. I know the colors are beautiful, like, you know, but because it's more motion, I think, in black and white. This um, image was on my L panel. Um, again, a um, couple of years ago. Um, I suppose I'm taking, um, doing photography since the 70s. But yeah. I only went for my L there a few years ago, and um, uh, this is one of the images that was uh, on my panel. And um, they were all saying to me, "How did I get? Um, how did I get so close to this guy?" Well, uh, it was a surf um, wave in a hotel, and um, actually, I took this with my D seven thousand eighteen to one hundred five lens, a kit lens. And um, I actually probably took the good bones of eight or 900 images of this, not this particular surfer, but the surfers that were doing it, like, you know, it was called a wave surf. So actually this one worked out very well for me, like, you know, so this image made my panel for my L. We get into something different again now. Um, a friend of mine, um, John Milan, Asked me would I do um, a bit of photography with him, uh, reenactments, and um, I said I would. So we're uh, his friends, very friendly with a couple of these guys, and uh, he said would I come down and give him a hand? I said I would, and um, I actually asked the boys would they pose. So um, I said they would, and um, we took a few images of them during the day. Uh, it was a it was a great day out. Um, they do whatever you want them to do. It's pose and pose with the guns to your face or if it is um, falling down or whatever. So I said, I, I, I do one uh, whole image for them, like, you know, and um, I did a bit of work on this now, kind of a HDR effect kind of thing, but um, it worked out. I, I think it's a lovely image and they were all delighted with it and actually they use it in their, uh, they have their own um, page and they, they use it for a, uh, a cover image for the page and um, you could go to the next one and I actually changed uh, to black and white then there's a black and white version of it and um, next you'll be able to see this one now and um, to me um, again I left I just changed it to black and white I think I like the color version myself. No, it's just a presence of choice. Um, again, I left it as is. Uh, I, I gave them the black and white and the color, but they went for the color. So uh, you could jump between the two, like you know. So it is up to again. It is if you like it in color, so be it. If you like it in black and white, so be it as well. So look, I gave them the two images, and they were happy with it, with the color one. So I was happy with that myself. Uh, and they have good detail in their faces and things like, you know, um, and they were happy. So that's the main thing. Okay. Um, I'm a member of the Blackwater Photographic Society, and um, we do have teams, um, photography. Um, we try and uh, help them, the newcomers, and uh, we do a couple of nights in, in the club, and one particular night was a still life night and um, 
uh, we set up a backdrop and uh, brought in a, a bit of fruit and a bit of flowers and a little bit of a churn and we put them together and um, we took a few shots from them and um, this is one of my uh, shots uh, I got a, it actually makes a fantastic print um, hopefully when all this COVID-19 is finished that um, I'll get up to, um, to Car Camera Group and I will show the, the image in a print um, uh, the colours are fantastic it, like, and it, it works well like, and, uh, but um, that's just a, a workshop night um, probably could do it at home like you know but uh, we did it in the club so uh, it worked out it worked out now good for me and, and worked out good for the rest of the, the club this is a shot um, I took oh 2010 and this shot has done very very well for me in sales this is a shot of uh, the spa house in Mallow say the spa house yes there is a well in the middle of this house and the spa springs now um it's a kind of a, a painting effect i put on it and um it did very very well to say it's, it's probably one of my most popular images for sale um i do kind of a few exhibitions every year and um that's the one that uh, they kind of always pick and people have picked uh, this image for uh, presentations uh, to well-known Mallow people. Um, so I'm thrilled with this image. Um, I'm delighted that it's selling well. Uh, it'll just buy another few things for the, the camera. So that's what it's about. And I print it. It actually makes a beautiful print um, on that uh, pair of white paper. Hello, we're on our second part of um, my, uh, my image displays. Um, we're into the, the nature wildlife section. And this first image, um, back in 2017, 2018, I introduced the image in the SACC Nature Photographer of the Year, which um, I took home first prize. Um, my first time winning this section. Um, I took this um, on a Nikon D800. The ISO was 800, f4.8, and uh, one is to two thousandths of a second. Um, what made it for me, I think, was the, um, the feathers. Um, a lot of people might leave them in. I'll take them out, sorry. But I left them in um, and uh, it worked. So it took the, took the major prize on on that day and I was thrilled. Uh, a bit of a shock, but I was thrilled. And then uh, that's the sparrow hawk that was taken in Scotland. Next is a pine marten. Uh, this shot was taken in Glory Glory Hides. Um, it was a, a fairly cold morning. Um, temperatures were way down. And, uh, as you can see, there was uh, snow and ice. Um, we eventually made it to, to Glory Glory Hides and actually this uh, Pine Martin on the stage for about five to six minutes. And we didn't, we didn't see him all day after that. So I was lucky to get this shot. That was a Pine Martin. Undoubtedly one of my, my, probably my best shots and probably one of the best shots I like myself. This is of a Kingfisher uh, just flying out of the, the water after catching a little minnow. Um, entered this in a few competitions. Um, did okay. Um, I think um, but not uh, anything spectacular. I said, I reckon the, uh, the judges weren't uh, happy with the kingfishers at the time. I think that there was too many of them in the competition, but uh, that was my last shot on the day in, uh, in Scotland. And uh, to get this image, uh, I was thrilled because uh, I love this bird and the colors are fantastic. 
This is another shot of Kingfisher. Again, this is the the new hide that's in um, Scotland at Alan McFadden's. That actually um, maybe eat your dinner off the floor there. It's so clean and everything, and you can actually park park your car and just step out of the car and step into the hide. It's absolutely fantastic. Well worth a visit. Um, I think uh, a few uh, members of the Cock Camera group have been uh, to Glory Glory Hyde, or sorry, to, to Scotland, and uh, probably have, have availed of this hide. Why we all go to um, Killarney is for the rutting season. And um, this is here on my doorstep in Mallow. Um, there are white deer. Um, this is taken in the castle in Mallow. Um, one beautiful, crisp, frosty morning. Um, I, I just love the colours, um, colours in the trees. And uh, some people said that I, you put this, that you turn the two um, the deer the same way. I said, <laughs> I said the two deer just stood when I was taking this image, and um, I, I just love, I just love the colours. And, and the white deer is uh, is different. So there's only two sets of white deer in, in Ireland. And one of them is Mallow, and I think the other one is in uh, up the Midlands somewhere. But uh, this is taken in Mallow Castle. Back to the Kingfisher again. Um, I love this bird. Um, love the colours. Um, spectacular um, specimen. Um, I just love the way that he has. he's just after catching the fish uh, in the beak. Um, actually, I'd say he was only about two to three feet away from me. Um, this is my first ever time photographing a kingfisher. And uh, I was thrilled to get this one, and he, he is pin sharp. And um, it's well worth a visit to, um, to Scotland, uh, as I said before. Um, a few of the members from Car Camera Group have been to Scotland. Uh, it's well worth the visit. Okay. I have seen uh, on Facebook and I've seen, um, I heard it on the radio that there was 23 of these buzzards uh, poisoned down in uh, East Cork or somewhere. Um, these are one of our most popular birds of prey here in Ireland, the buzzards. Um, actually, when I was on a trip to Scotland, this guy flew into um, where the hide was, not knowing that he was coming to there. Um, I shot off a few frames, and I think this is uh, one of my best shots of that day. This is a, a shot of a woodpecker. Again, uh, on, on a trip um, to Scotland. Um, again, never seen one before until I went to Scotland. But I think as far as I know, there, there, there's a few of them now back in um, Killarney National Park. And there are some in Wicklow. It is great to see these, uh, these birds coming to our shores. Um, to save us <laughs> heading to Scotland to see them again. If we can get to see him in Killarney National Park, which is only about 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes the most from me. So it would be great to capture him in, in, in Ireland, in Killarney. Um, this is uh, another favourite image of mine. This is actually taken back in Killarney uh, for the rutting season there about three years ago. Um, I actually happened to be there very, very early in the morning. I probably was there for maybe about half past five. Made my way to this lake. And um, lo and behold, this guy came out of nowhere. And uh, it just happened to walk straight past me. And I, I it was like a miracle. Um, the coloring is fantastic. Um, the reflection, absolutely fantastic. Um, I couldn't ask for a better morning. I've got a, a couple of shots of him, all right. Um, but um, this is probably my best one. Uh, I put this one into the IPF nature group. Uh, 
the south of Ireland. Um, and it uh, it was accepted um, in a competition with them to take on the north of Ireland. And um, I got a certificate for it. Uh, I was thrilled with that. My first time entering in the IPA, IPF group. So I was thrilled with that one um, again. Get up early in the morning, down to Killarney, and you probably might get these shots. Um, I probably didn't say what I took that last shot with, but um, the, the shot of the um, the deer, uh, it was ISO 500 F9, one is to two fifties of a second, 120 millimeters on the lens, 70 to 200. We'll get onto this uh, image now. It is a uh, Again, it is in um, Alan McFadden's hide in Scotland. Um, it is a, a squirrel reflection. Uh, it's my first time getting to the reflection pool. Um, absolutely fantastic, like you know. Um, you know, I like squirrels, like you know, um, especially the red ones, like I don't know. I don't fancy the grey ones, but um, I just like this image. Like uh, the reflection is beautiful, like you know. Um, what can I say about it is there's a little story with this one. Um, my fellow photographer, um, Valerie Walsh, um, she does a lot of the driving, and um, we were in Killarney um, a couple of years ago, and um, we were walking uh, in the National Park, and all of a sudden we heard all this rumbling around and. Um, we said we'd, we'd investigate it, and there was there was a few uh, fellow photographers there as well. But uh, we came up to this huge tree in the middle of uh, the national park, and we see this guy rolling around in the mud. Uh, he, he was fairly sharp, like you know, and um, we kind of snuck up on him. Um, I forgot to show the photograph of me hiding behind the big tree, taking this image, but he noticed me and. Um, uh, he didn't hang around for, uh, uh, for about two or three minutes only and um, he took off like the clappers but uh, I shot off a couple of frames and um, uh, he stunning stunning animal to, uh, just to be alongside alone like and I was only maybe oh, maybe two feet three feet away from him like you know and um, absolutely stunning like you know um, I should have put in the other photograph to show you how close I was, because my friend Valerie Walsh, she took the image uh, of me behind the tree. <laughs> this is an image um, I had on my L panel. Um, yeah, it just, uh, I can't say much about this image, only that he's good and sharp. Um, and again, I, I printed them on a uh, pair of white paper and uh, it worked well. It, it, the, the image sat on the paper, lovely, like, you know. Um, now, I started um, something here, um, maybe I suppose this was over 12 months ago now, maybe 18 months ago. I started uh, doing something different with um, a bit of wildlife. Actually, these are seagulls. I got a seagull study. Now, I could probably make up a panel with, with these, but... Now this mightn't be everybody's um, photography, but I um, I like doing this. Uh, I spotted um, something on uh, Flickr once upon a time, and I said, "Oh, it just was amazing." And I said, "Look, I'll try and I'll do something like this." So um, this is a, a very slow shutter speed. No, uh, the purest out there say so you'll have to have that uh, pin sharp, and you must have it. Uh, Everything, everything must be in focus. But um, to me, it doesn't have to be in focus. Well, again, this is my my new style of photography for uh, seagulls. Right? I'll tell you what I uh, I took this. Uh, my ISO was two hundred. My f stop was ten. My shutter speed was one. 25th of a second 
at 105 millimeters. I had a, an 18 to 105 on a D7000. Now, uh, this I have entered in, in, in a few competitions, that, but the judges don't seem to like these kind of stuff like that. But I don't mind because I like it. Some other people like it, some other people hate it, but I don't mind because I like it. And that's what it's about. This is staying with the team of slow, sh slow shutter speed. Again, I just like the movement of these boards. Now, again, as I said, the purists would like a pin sharp and thing, but I like a motor focus because uh, that's the way I, I shot it out of focus. Um, to tell you where I took it, I took it above in Cork City, down at the uh, where all the seagulls, uh, where the people feed them there. I took them down there, and you can see just right up in the very top of it, you can see the colours of the houses and the shops, and there's a few cars there. Um, I'll tell you what I, I, I used ISO 400, and I went to F22 at 125th of a second at 140 millimeters. So that I would have taken that with my 70 to 200. 2.8. Um, I just like I I I love it. Um, again, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I like it, uh, and that's the main thing. Again, staying with the team of slow shutter speed for the seagull study, as, as I call it. Um, I just saw this image. Um, I didn't. I don't take out stuff or put in stuff into images. Um, I shoot them as is. If I if I like, I think it works well in black and white. Um, I won't say I did a whole lot of work into it, like you know, but I, I, as I said, I changed it to black and white. And uh, them tree boards were that's the formation they were flying in, and and to me, uh, I love this image. And I have another one or two coming up as well, but I like this image. It's just I I, I love I love the way the wings are uh, flapping, like you know. Um, I tell you now what, what I took that with uh, ISO 100, F22, one is to eight of a second, and I had a, a zoom of 200 millimeters, so I did shoot it with the uh, 7200 2.8 and converted to black and white. Again, another slow shutter speed in the study of gulls. Um, again, I change just to black and white. Um, to me, I love it. I love doing this kind of photography. Now I have entered this in the Nature Photographer of the Year um, last year or this year actually. Um, it scored okay. Um, again, I don't think the judges are into this yet at the moment, but. Um, I keep plugging away with this kind of stuff at the moment because I, I like it. Um, now everybody could try it. Um, again, people mightn't like it. They say, oh, well, again, it needs to be sharp. But uh, to me, I don't think so. Um, I like it. And again, if I like it, I don't care about anybody else. The photographer of the year was on in 2020. And um, there was teams in the, um, uh, in the competition, and um, I was trawling through some images, uh, put in some birds, and I was shot one image for it. And uh, I said, I put this guy in for the laugh, you know, and uh, because to me, like, <laughs> um, the way his mouth is open, like you know, and the eyes look at him, like you know, look at us, and I said, yeah. I shove him in, like, you know, and see how he gets on. Like, sure, just only because uh, I had nothing else to put in. I said, This this fella, my, I couldn't believe it that I got um, an honorable mention for this guy. Um, and I was thrilled, I was thrilled. And when it, when it came up on the screen, uh, a few people laughed, and I was thrilled that uh, a few people giggled uh, and laughed to her. Um, uh, I was happy with that, like, you know. Um, I can't tell you what I took him with because I haven't written it down. But um, he was one of my images that I entered in the 
SAC Nature Photographer of the Year 2020. And we'll get to the next few. And um, this is another image I entered in the Nature Photographer of the Year 2020. Um, I took this image, I think I took this image in um, Spain or butterfly. I like it. Uh, um, he's Irish, pin sharp. Uh, okay, one of his, um, what they call him there, is like the autofocus. Maybe the back leg is autofocus, but once his eye is pin sharp, um, nice colors. I, I just uh, slotted him in, in in the Nature Photography Year 2020 this year. Yes, um, back to Scotland and um, squirrel. A red squirrel. Um, this was late in the evening now, and um, the sun just hit them beautifully. And um, I was thrilled when I saw this image coming up in the, in, in the back of the screen in the camera. Um, the lighting was fantastic there, like you know, it was an evening shot. And um, I entered that in the SACC Nature Photography of the Year. 2020 again, and um, I got a nice score with that. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a hard competition uh, this year, 2020. But um, in the next few images, uh, I'll tell you how I got on. This is another image. Um, I took him. I saw 200 f8. One is to 160 at 170 millimeters. Um, a Tammy Owl, uh, beautiful image. I, I, I entered that in the SACC. Uh, he's pin sharp, and um, I got a certificate for him. Um, nice image, well printed. It's beautiful print now. Um, I must say, um, probably the digital doesn't give it justice, but. Um, if I do uh, get up to you sometime, I, I'll bring on that image uh, on a print. It's absolutely beautiful. This is a harvest mouse. Again, I entered this guy in the SSAC Nature Photographer of the Year 2020. And I took him at ISO 100, F16. One is to one sixtieth of a second, ninety millimeters, um, and that won me a an honourable mention in the SACC Nature Photography Year twenty twenty. Yeah, this is a another little harvest mouse. This guy uh, won me a silver medal in the SACC Nature Photography Year 2020. That was held in Torles. And I shot him um, ISO 200, F13, 1 is to 160 at 200 millimeters. And um, just love the background, is absolutely stunning. Colors are beautiful, like in a Again, probably the digital image doesn't give it justice. Again, I will show this uh, print. Uh, it's absolutely a beautiful print. This image is of a praying mantis uh, on a poppy. This image I entered in the SACC Nature Photography Year in um, the, uh, the category was invertebrates. And this image got me a gold medal. And actually, uh, I won the overall SACCC Nature Photographer of the Year 2020 with this image. And uh, it was a shock. I was thrilled for the shock because when I won it in 2017, 2018, I didn't think I, 
I'd win it again because the standard photography in 2020 was unbelievable. And um, it was ran this, this year in a kind of a salons uh, style uh, scoring, like, you know, and um, I couldn't believe it uh, when, my, my, when my name was called out um, of the winner of the 2020 Nature Photographer of the Year. Um, Unfortunately, when we went to the, the finals in Dublin, um, we didn't get anywhere really, you know, but I was thrilled to win it uh, the second time um, for me. Uh, it was great. Um, what can I say? Um, this is my last image uh, I'm going to show you tonight. And um, just to finish up, um, this is my LIPF panel that I submitted in 2016 and was successful I uh, was thrilling the day there was a lot of competition there to to get your L uh, it has gone harder and harder to get it but um, thankfully I was successful and um, it worked out to be one of the best printed panels on the day um, that's what the, the judges said it, so I was thrilled with that and I uh, to see my first image there was um, the interior of an old house with the chair. Have you seen it on the, the screen already? And the next shot then would be a shot from Fenor, County Clare, uh, Seascape. And the third image there would be back in Dingle. Uh, I call it the Lone Stone. The next image onto that then is the Sunbeam which I had uh, nearly got wet, but in a, and the next image back down to the right, um, is another interiors of an old house. And um, back over to the, my left hand corner when, as I look at it in my screen, um, pictures of the board. Then the next image, Actually, I flipped that image um, to the panning shot um, because it worked as the, the cyclist was coming into the, the image instead of going out. And then the next image then was the surfer. Um, the next one then was the spa house in Mallow in the snow. And uh, the last one then for the my L panel. This was actually taken in Mallow train station and there was um, a few old trains came to Mallow and uh, just just have, have to be passing passing by and this guy was had his head out the window and I just photographed him and um, it worked well in my panel but I got my LIPF and I with it so I was thrilled and um, thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed um, everything that I showed uh, earlier on and um, all the nature and uh, wildlife photographs that I have and um, I'd like to thank Tim Murphy for uh, um, all the help uh, and fairness to him now. He sat there with me for the last probably hour and a little bit and um, I'd like to thank him for uh, for doing this for me and um, Hopefully, um, you'll enjoy it, and um, I hope to see you probably in 2021. Um, thanks very much for looking at all the images, and uh, thanks to Cock Camera Group and Charlie O'Donovan for uh, inviting me along. And uh, Mind yourself and be safe. Thank you very much. So thank you, Packy, for that um, uh, for that um, show. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, some great images. Um, we'll all be out um, hunting wildlife after this, I'm sure, and buying the big lenses and hiding away in the undergrowth and everything else. Um, great images, as I say, Packy, and um, very enlightening talk. Uh, well done. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, we'll have Packy back in the club.
sometime when we get back to our club um, rooms. Um, I think we'd all love to see some of his uh, some of his print images as well. So in in times to come, we'll um, we'll we'll do this back in the clubhouse again in in print format. Hopefully, Becky. Thank you very much. Um, so next uh, tonight, um, Tim is going to give us a presentation on the shoot at home uh, uh, challenge. Um, this is the last tutorial in the series um, uh, for the shoot at home. Um, so I think Tim is going to show us some dandelion uh, seed photography here and how he gets some fabulous photographs using dandelions and macro photography and, and things like that. Um, keep in mind that the closing date is coming up for that. Um, please uh, reveal that uh, Tim sent you and the inbox is open, as I say. I think it's up to three shots uh, per person uh, will be allowed. So you know, plenty of scope for um, for creativity here. Um, so, as I say, like every other week, I'd encourage everybody to um, to partake in this. It is a bit of fun, you know, and uh, it's nice to see people out doing different things. Hi, and welcome along to the challenge for the shoot at home stuff. So do try and enter, it's a bit of crack, and remember that the closing date is June 2nd, and you can submit up to three photographs. These photographs uh, should be taken uh, at home or within your five mile, five kilometer precautionary radius uh, during the time of the um, time that we've been restricted to home and uh, short walks. Uh, so get the shots in, it's a bit of crack, and we'll see what it's like. So this idea for uh, shoot at home is shooting dandelions. Lots of ways you can shoot them. And uh, we'll take a look at a few different ways. And as usual, the shots I'll be showing, some of them are just straight out of camera, some of them are processed. You'll find lots of these dandelions around the place, especially if the municipal services haven't arrived yet to cut the um, lawns and verges and roundabouts in your area. You can find different varieties and uh, the standard one is that one we'll all be familiar with, the common or gardener um, lawn wrecker. This is a different one, it's kind of a, a higher, skinnier one and the tops are smaller on it. So you get different varieties of the dandelion seed and dandelion seed heads if you look around. And of course the different heads you get get you different type of shots. So to begin with, just to have a look at what we might call a straight shot. So into the sun or with the backlit and vegetation around it, haloed. This is one of those smaller, tall ones. And this is the same, but with a colored background behind it. We use a card or uh, another bloom or flower. And of course, once you start spraying some water, all the vegetation and um, flower images really benefit from this. Use a mister or a spray bottle to get the water on. So for some of those straight shots, uh, some of those images are of that iconic style, straight into the sun, setting sun, so on. And uh, they're easy to do. You can do them with any camera, any lens almost. And uh, you can also put your own stamp on them. So another way just to manipulate those straight shots is to use the dandelion head in front of a scene or a background. So here you see it with a little bit of a river scene in the background and you can do this easily set up on a tripod with your camera, hold the dandelion seed in front of the scene and then shake it or blow it just to get the movement. Uh, and again, adjust your aperture to get the background either in road or focus, depending on what you want to do. Uh, there are other techniques for getting these ones because with the shaking and blowing, probably you need a good bit of hit and miss to get the shot correct. This particular shot I set up by using a large print in the background. You see the dandelion just kind of stuck up there. And um, by using a, a light on the dandelion and optionally a light on the background, you can get different effects. I find you normally need to have some kind of light on the dandelion to get it looking really well. And you see here, I've changed the exposure just to get a little bit more of the background in. So that's one way to get those shots. These ones are done a different way, and I'll show you how that's operated in a moment. So for the seeds flying over an area, uh, we'll take a look at exactly how that's done. 
So here we've got the setup, which is, so that is a piece of glass. And then that glass is just held up on a couple of supports. And then on the bottom, underneath on the table or the floor or wherever, you place a print. Put the glass back over again. So now if I bring the camera in here, you can see how it's going to operate. You can move the shot underneath the image, the photograph. And of course, you can also move around the dandelion and the dandelion seeds to get them into position. I find it helps if you've got a um, video lamp or some kind of um, torch or the, um, the light from your phone. And if you try to light up just the dandelion and keeping it off the background. So for that setup, almost any lens will do. So you use a kit lens, you can use a macro lens, whatever kind of gets things uh, in the frame and into focus without any stuff hanging around the outside. For the aperture and shutter speed, so keep your shutter speed, if it's if you're on a tripod, it doesn't really matter, you can have it as low as you like. Uh, for the f-stop, uh, it's your choice as to whether you want the dandelion and the shot in the background in focus, if you do. So you set kind of a high aperture, so f8, f5.6, something like that. If you want to get the background out of focus, then set a low aperture, so f2.8, f1.4, and so on. Uh, also, to um, to accentuate the, the background out of focus, uh, you, can, you can experiment with moving the photograph closer and further away from the glass where the dandelions are. So as a last change in this dandelion seeds floating over a scene idea, just place your tablet or phone or even computer screen underneath that glass with the dandelion on it instead of your print. This has the added advantage of giving the dandelion seeds a little bit of back illumination. And of course, you can easily swipe through and choose different photographs that might suit. You can also pinch zoom in and out on the shot to get different effects. So these three were of the same night scene in Cork City as a background. And I just moved the, um, uh, my, my finger around on the screen to get different positions and zoomed in and out to get different bokeh backgrounds. Remember also you can set some plain backgrounds, some neutrals or some skies so that you can um, paste these in and composite them later or just select the seeds easily and drop them into other photographs. If you've always wanted a drone but didn't get to get one yet, here's a drone simulation idea on my tablet in the background is Google Maps. Uh, so now you can photograph those seeds floating over your very own house. And lastly, just take a look at getting closer to those seeds, getting them on their own, individually or in groups. So with this technique, you kind of need to get close. You really need a macro, ideally. Make sure you're introducing water or some backlighting to get the best look on the, the seed heads or the individual seeds and then start to um, get less and less seeds, maybe a group of three like this, and then get down to the single individual seed. Here, this one's got the seed, but it's got the big head in the background, just one drop of water in the middle. And these are kind of the classic ones where they, you've just got the, the, the single seed head, maybe with just one drop of water, some kind of reflection or a fraction or a shadow. So this is the setup I use for most of these type of individual shots. It's a kind of a simulated softbox. It's a light tent and just above the light tent is a loft window bringing in outside skylight. On the right hand side of the tent, you see a little video light and that can be a light, a torch or just the light from your telephone shining across. On the left hand side, you can just see a little black smudge, which is actually a reflector, which is on the left hand side, bouncing a bit more light in. And you can alternate that side by putting in a black card or black reflector to try some different light effects. On the base, in this case, is my piece of white perspex. So this allows me to get the kind of shadow effect. There's a technique of putting the dandelion seed into a little dish of water and then shooting the seed with reflections on the water and reflections of flowers in the background on the water. I've done that as well, but I just find this Perspex one works better and it's a bit uh, easier to organize and set up. 
none of the setup here really is mandatory. You can do it really just by sticking it on a table with some window light or indeed by using some speed light flashes. Uh, but again, I just found that this one got me kind of optimal results. So having things behind the uh, dandelion normally is just to give uh, a background or to get it reflected in a little bit of water which is held in the dandelion seed itself. So to get the water you need to use a spray and spray the water on and to do this you need to spray it just very lightly and basically build up the spray on the dandelion seed. So they're very light and they tend to fall over if you put too much on them at the one time. Uh, but building it up gradually is the way to go. You can also use this syringe technique to uh, get a tiny drop of water onto the middle of the dandelion seed. See the idea is here is that there's just one drop of water. When we use a spray it'll spray all over and get it on the edges of the seed as well. When you just have one drop then you can start getting uh, just one drop reflections and so on and looks looks kind of cool. You need something better than this. This is just uh, the syringe. It doesn't actually have the hypodermic needle on the end but if you get a hypodermic needle you can drop a very tiny little drop onto the seed. It's, it's a tiny drop but it's quite large in relation to the seed. It will look like a large ball in the middle of the dandelion seed head when you use your macro lens. And just to take a look at a few of the shots taken with the setups I've described, either the Perspex or the water bath. You can bring the changes on these by changing the background. Also the size of the uh, water spray, the amount of spray on the dandelion seat head, and indeed changing the dandelion seat head itself and the angle that you've positioned it with. Because you're photographing something small really, really close up, your depth of field is going to be terribly, terribly small. This doesn't matter all the time because having some things out of focus does give your shot that kind of atmospheric effect. But trying to get the fronds of the seed head that are at the very front in focus and keeping focus all the way to those fronds which are going to be at the back of the seed head is challenging. You need to do that kind of stuff for this particular type of photograph which is an attempt to get a refraction of the flower in the background in the one single water drop right in the middle of the dandelion seed head. So the only way to effectively get this really done right is to focus stack the images. So in focus stacking you can get that done in camera with some cameras uh, or alternatively you can take the individual shots and put them into your favorite editing program to stack them properly. So here's a sequence of the individual shots being used as a stack, and then we'll see the stack shot at the end. And finishing up with a couple of sample images. All of these shots are taken with the techniques described or variations thereof. Mostly they're shot with uh, 60 mil macro lens or some of them I took with um, Sigma Art 29 mil. All of those on a micro four thirds sensor. A couple have got the freeze treatment. Uh, so the uh, dandelion with water is frozen or slightly frozen, uh, then lit and photographed. Otherwise, it's a question of choosing the seed head, giving it a spray with water or some water drops, uh, lighting it and positioning it against uh, appropriate backgrounds.
So thank you, Tim, for that um, fantastic presentation. Some uh, great food for thought there again. Um, so we'll be all um, out with the macro lenses and getting little drops of water and uh, dandelion seeds and God knows what for the next um, couple of uh, days. So um, it'll be great to see the, the results as they come in for that competition. Um, next week, um, we have a guest uh, photographer next week. Um, he's a professional um, photographer based in the UK. His name is Julian Elliott. Um, now you can, um, Tim has a, a note on the screen there um, where you can pick up his website, but uh, failing that, if you just type in um, Julian Elliott uh, photographer, um, I think you'll, that will take you to his website. Um, he's, um, I suppose he's a travel stroke landscape photographer. He does a bit of everything actually. Um, does some outstanding work in Patagonia and in Mongolia and places like that. Um, so he's going to show us some images next week from his travels um, to these exotic places. So um, I think we're in for a treat next week. Um, really looking forward to his um, his presentation. And um, who knows, maybe we might replace Scotland with Patagonia or Mongolia next year. Uh, who knows? Who knows what the future will bring for us? So that's it, guys. Um, that's it from us. Um, have a great week. Thanks for tuning in and uh, look forward to, um, to seeing you all again next week. All the best. Take care and stay safe.